So this is going to be a little video tour of the internals of Captain Hook, my uh, three pound battle bot. This is the first battle bot I've built, so please give me your feedback on what I did right and what I did wrong. So first off, just a little demo of him driving here on the table. I'll be careful not to get him off. He's got a hook crusher as the primary weapon, so I'll give you a little demo of that running. Runs pretty smoothly, fairly quick, and has about 100 pounds of force at the tip. And so now we'll uh, dig inside him and I'll show you what he's got going on inside. Um, so the electronics in here for now are definitely very messy. This is my prototype electronics. I haven't cut any of the wires down to length and everything is still on connectors so that I can pull the electronics out and do tests with it very quickly. Um, right now, these are Fingertech Robotics Tiny ESC V2 um, DC motor controllers, which are running the wheels and uh, the weapon motor. These are the only speed controllers I'm using. I'm using three of them. They have been absolutely fantastic so far. Right now everything's connectorized inside with these Anderson power pole connectors, which are very easy to crimp, and I've got a little power distribution block there, and then I'm using a SparkFun, not a SparkFun, a Spectrum radio as the primary radio for the system, and that seems to be doing very well. Um, I right now have absolute overkill on the battery which fits quite snugly in here. I'm just going to squeeze him out. Oh, he's a tight fit. Um, this is overkill for testing for when I'm prototyping around way, way more um, capacity and uh, amperage than is needed for this robot, but good for testing. I have some smaller batteries I'll be trying out. Um, but he, right now with the battery and all the electronics in, it's sitting at 46, uh, four, 44 ounces. Um, so little under the three pound weight limit for beetle weight. So now that we have him up inside, you can see the structure and design of him pretty well. So all of the armor panels, top, bottom, and all the sides are eighth inch thick 6061 T5 aluminum uh, panel. They're all cut to size. Um, the CAD models for all of this are online and you can check out the design there if you wanna copy it or steal anything from it. One of the interesting things I did are these vertical columns, which form the primary structure of the robot. So they're all identical, um, I call them super nuts. So they're quarter inch aluminum uh, square shaft that's been cut into two inch lengths, and then it's tapped for 440 screws on the top, bottom, and the two sides, and some of the corner ones here, if you can see, have multiple taps on both sides so that uh, all of the panels are individually removable. They're all held in place with at least four screws and you can take off any of the panels, access any of the sides at any time and replace any of the parts. So um, I liked that I did it all bolted. There's not a single weld um, on the whole thing and the it should be very easy to maintenance and repair and I think that it will be uh, pretty strong. So moving on to the main weapon mechanism, this is a half RPM uh, DC 12 volt gear motor with a 3000 to one gearbox on it. And then I'm actually down gearing it here. Originally in my design, I had a few different versions of the gear ratio between these shafts. Um, and I ended up settling on this one for the best compromise of torque and speed. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, though it's a little weak. Um, one thing you'll notice, this was a uh, retrofit design as I went through it. You'll see that there's some extra holes here drilled for these column blocks. Originally I had these teeth that come out the front and the columns that are supporting the uh, shaft here as two separate parts. I realized that if I made them one part, I could get a much stronger um, stress load so that when I'm crushing something, it goes straight through this into these shafts and it's not going anywhere else through the chassis and there's no uh, weird places where bending can happen. In doing that, I actually moved them in and lost a lot of the support for the end of the shaft. So what I ended up doing was I ended up extending the shaft to the side here and flipping this gear around and there's actually a little um, recess that's carved into this block so that this column is actually supporting the thrust load from the pressure angle between these gears. These gears are 20 degree pressure angle and there's actually quite a lot of force bending this shaft out. Um, but this column is taking that load up right now and with the lid on and these screws in place, I've found that um, no gear slippage, no binding, it's been, it's been very reliable. Um, one detail to point out is that this, uh, the primary weapon motor here is in a uh, C-clamp 
so that it is actually uh, rotatable. So I can undo this Allen key here, which takes pressure off, and then this whole motor assembly can rotate. And the gearbox has an off-center shaft on it, so that as I rotate this motor, I can change the spacing between this shaft and the motor to set the depthing on these two gears and tune it in exactly to where I want so that these gears run very smoothly. I have very little slop. Um, it's actually, it looks like a lot at the end, but it's actually very little slop at the gear interface here um, for, you know, little cheapo aluminum gears. And so far this um, weapon's been working very well. 1000 RPM, excuse me, uh, drive motors here that have been um, absolutely fantastic. Very responsive with tiny SCs, and then I've got light flight foam wheels held in place with some aluminum hubs that fit them that are set screwed onto the shaft. Uh, you'll see in my accompanying drive footage that it um, is able to drive on the back, on the bottom, upside down, and recover from any position that it lands in, which I'm very happy about. And uh, I think it'll do pretty well at the competition this year. But um, as I've said, this is my first BattleBot I've built, so we'll see how it does.